Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of our Podium Picks. We are inside the Working Against Gravity studios. I'm Sean Woodland with Tom Marquez. Super excited about today's edition of Podium Picks. Tommy, we are going uh, back to the world of pop culture. This is actually a viewer suggestion. Mm -hmm. We are doing our Podium Picks for karaoke songs. Woo. So that's going to be, be some good ones here. It's going to be a lot of fun. Pour yourself a nice warm cup of tea with some honey and some lemon. Loosen up those golden <laughs> pipes. It's uh yeah, I'm looking looking forward to this one. But you know, we know who stands on top of the podium as far as nutrition is concerned, and that's our friends at Working Against Gravity, the presenting sponsor here of this show. And they have some pretty cool stuff going on right now for our listeners and friends of the show. That is a fact, Sean. And regardless of what your goals are, they will help you stand on the podium of life mm, there you with go. their online nutrition coaching program. I have been a part of what I call hashtag team wag for the last three years. Um, the biggest differentiator between for me at least, and being able to work with an online nutrition coach and using the system that WAG provides is you get to work one-on-one -on -one with someone that you have immediate response times to. I get to message anytime and throughout our relationship, we're working on custom crafting nutritional habits that fit my lifestyle specifically. And that comes with the onboard process of providing goals, mm -hmm. a body composition. They take into account all the other factors, sleep, energy, um, all the other stimuluses that can kind of affect it. And really, regardless of what your nutrition program you're looking for, whether it's keto, um, whether you're looking at intermittent fasting, maybe you want low carb, carb cycling, all sorts of different things, they're able to work with you and kind of fit that into the framework of your life. They work with, you know, besides someone like myself who's just mm -hmm. trying to be fit and maybe, you know, go kick and punch some people every <laughs> now and then, they'll work with some top athletes, whether it's, you know, Katrin David's daughter, Cole Sager. They've got people of all skill ranges and, and fitness levels and goals, whether you're just trying to lose weight or you're trying to maybe beef up a little bit like I currently am you know, for <laughs> beach season. They can work with you guys, and they have a special deal for all of our listeners. You go to workingagainstgravity.com, use the code ELITE50, get 50 bucks off your first month. Um, if you want to give WAG a try they also and you're not quite sure about taking the leap, this is a great way to get it at a discount and they'll refund your money after 90 days if you're not Perfect. fully satisfied. So what are you waiting for? Um, give it a shot and really dial in your nutrition like you've always been wanting to. All right. Working Against Gravity, we really are happy to have them as our presenting sponsor here on our Podium Picks episode for karaoke songs. Okay. Mm. So I think I started last week. Yep. So I will let you do the honors and kick us off here with your dark horse and spirit of the games for karaoke songs now this is great because sometimes okay. you and i will discuss things beforehand okay. i have no idea what you're going to pick and you have no idea what i'm going to pick so i don't know if we have any crossover here's or not so all right so this dark horse one was actually revealed to me via a live performance essentially oh. karaoke but without the music background okay this is an actual live performance it is wagon wheel by old crow ah, medicine show and i know okay yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. if you recall the when we in 2014, I think. I think it was 2013 13. or 2014, yeah. When we went to Big Sky, Montana. Yep. And one Daniel Joseph Bailey, I think that's his middle name, <laughs> strolled up and grabbed a guitar uh -huh. and just laid down an excellent version of Wagon Wheel and brought the house down. I mean, there wasn't a dry and there eye. There was standing and, ovations I mean, everywhere. I might have married him if he, if he had <laughs> asked me at that point. And I was like, that was an awesome carry, like an awesome song mm -hmm. to sing, especially because more people in the crowd knew the lyrics than I expected. Yeah. Now, granted, Darius Rucker did a cover, and it mm -hmm. became very popular then, but I was like, that's a great song to sing for people, okay. especially if the vibe's kind of like a little more country, a little more relaxed, get everyone, start singing together. I liked it. So that was your dark horse. Yes. Okay. So spirit of the games now, karaoke songs, Tommy Marquez. All right. So spirit of the games. This is a classic karaoke song. And one of the things I always like, particularly if you're really trying to win over the crowd, mm -hmm. okay. No, sometimes yep. you just want to bring the house down uh -huh. and get everyone singing with you. Sweet Caroline oh, by Neil Diamond. Okay. <laughs> yep. Is you, you're going to get everyone saying I, the bop, bop, bop. I think you might have that. that ranked a little low. Tommy. Uh, yes. Okay. Well, well, Sean, I am. <laughs> I'm not. Just, as, I'm not dispute as, that. I'm not as middle class fancy as you. So. <laughs> but I always knew that if it was karaoke night on oh, what was it Thursdays, mm -hmm. Santa Clara, one of the bars had karaoke. I always knew that one of the final. Th they always reserved it, so you couldn't sing "Sweet Caroline" until like one of the final mm -hmm. three songs. Okay, that just 
torch the place. <laughs> All right. So your dark horse, uh, wagon wheel, and your spirit of the games goes to Sweet Caroline. And I, like I said, think you're disrespecting Neil Diamond. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, little foreshadowing. But, it's okay. Uh, okay. I will start with my dark horse. Um, now, I, I think that for me, the dark horse is that like, this is one that it's got a high degree of difficulty, mm -hmm. but if you can pull it off, you're a karaoke hero. All right. And that is Bohemian Rhapsody oh, by Queen. I think you have that oh, too. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but, and the reason is, is because not everybody can pull that one off. Like you yeah. can't be just, you, you can't get a few wobbly pops and you step up and do that one yeah. and yeah. have a good time. You can really butcher that song. You can. But if you pull it off, man, you know, that's a, it's an impressive performance. So that is my dark horse, Bohemian Rhapsody. My spirit of the games, and I, I am with you on this one, you, you need a song that has moments where everybody in the crowd can participate. They might not know any of the lyrics, but they know this one part. You know, they know like the chorus or the build up to the chorus, the, whatever it is. And that is Bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer. Oh, all right. Because I think everybody can belt out the whoa, -ho, you know, yep, when you get yep. to that. That's a, that's a good crowd participation effort oh. right there. I don't know if everyone knows the lyrics. But they know the they know the chorus, and you can you can rely on the crowd to be behind you in that moment. So that's a my uh, spirit of the games goes oh, to live God, in that's a on good a prayer. One by bon Jovi. That's a great one. Yeah, oh, I just pictured all sorts of hair, and just <laughs> feathered and lethal. <laughs> yep, and that was the video, wasn't that the video? You might not even remember this, but I think that they it was shot in a live performance, and they showed them they were like they were on wires, and they're like, oh yeah, the yeah. <laughs> so I was like, that is awesome. No, it's not. It's pretty oh, late. Man. Okay. Now, now we're on the podium. So right. I'll give you your third place selection. Uh, my third place. I'm fairly confident you won't have this one because this one also has a special place in my heart with okay. the story behind it. My third place is Friends in Low Places by Garth. Brooks. That's a good one. I did consider that. Put, put I did, okay. did consider putting right. that on my list. That's a good one. So, in high school, I went to a I went to an all boys Catholic school. Okay, that was a powerhouse in football. Mm -hmm. We we won our equivalent of state three out of the four years that I was there. Mm -hmm. And there was a rule when you made varsity. I, if on the ride home after a win, you got to sing and you could only sing one song. Okay. And it was friends in low places by Garth Brooks. Mm -hmm. And the song had to be started by a senior in the back of the bus. Okay. And so we'd all be just kind of waiting, 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 waiting. And then one, one senior would get picked and he just shouted. Blame it all on my roots. And then everybody's <laughs> like, I showed up in boots. And then we just start singing. And that was like our celebra celebratory mm -hmm. song after a win. And I, man, after we won, we won our equivalent of state my senior year. Uh -huh. Oh, that was like, that was like awesome. Just sing, getting to sing Who that song. Who started it? Do you remember? Uh, so usually it was one of the linemen. I may have gotten to start that one. So I hope so because Lyman notoriously cannot sing. Well, our our championship game, I had the big catch. I, okay, I was very go. I was very fortunate. Right. We were down four with like a minute forty five on our own like twenty yard line, and I ran a seam route that I broke free and busted for seventy eight yards or whatever. Nice. We won. We won the game. I got I got tripped up at the one. I was so oh, mad, but we punched it in. There but, you go. Yeah. But yeah, so that that was that was fun. That I, I just have so many good memories of being on the bus right home from football and getting to sing that. I song. like that you picked one that has special meaning to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's third, third place is uh friends in low places for Tommy. So yeah. Tommy, my third place. Okay. <laughs> At first I was afraid. <laughs> oh, no. I was petrified. <laughs> Kept thinking I could never live without you by my side. Oh, that's so but good. But then I spent so many nights thinking how you did me wrong. And I grew strong. And I learned to get along. So now you're back. That one. That is, I will that is, survive. Oh, that man, is that number is three. And the only reason it is not higher is because I feel like it is very, it's, the ladies love it. Yeah. Like, I feel like as a female, you're required to sing. There's something about being yeah. a woman that you're just like required to sing with that song. Like men have some songs that they're required to sing about sing when they come on. And mm -hmm. I think it's this one and baby got back. Those yeah. are the two that all women will always sing. So yeah. I think if you're, you know, if, if you're at a karaoke bar and you're looking to get the crowd behind you and it skews female, I will survive. Oh, get up there so because good. you're going to be the intro alone. No. Oh, Come it on. just it just like lays the breadcrumbs. Yes. And you could talk it. You could sing it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you could. Uh, isn't that 
It's the and it was in the movie The Replacements. Replacements, yes. yes, yeah, yeah. They did like a line dance. Yeah, that so. was how they like bonded was mm-hmm. over that song in, in prison. Yep. <laughs> so uh, or in jail. I'm sorry. There's a difference between prison and jail. I uh, have a strong suspicion that's what they're singing in San yeah. Quentin right now. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so yeah, that's just that's one. And, and again, I, I don't think I would have. I maybe would have had it higher if it had a more of a universal appeal. Mm, yes. But I feel like if you're at a uh, again, your audience skews female. Get up there and sing that song because you're going to bring the house down. Oh, yeah. All right. So number number three for me is I Will Survive. So my number two is what you mentioned in Bohemian okay. Rhapsody. All right. That's that's a good, strong choice. Because um, I, there's, it's, well, it's such an epic song, right? It's just like such a... Oh. It's, it's, it has it's, every style of singing. It goes up and down mm-hmm. and all around, and it tells the story, and mm-hmm. it's like there's tragedy and triumph. It's an epic. And it's 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 it, it's one of my favorite songs of all time. Like I have so many good memories of like, mm-hmm. and there's movie for like the the scene from Wayne's World. See, that's how many people in my generation were introduced to that song. <laughs> yeah, was in that from that movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, my uh, like my my parents and were like big Queen fans yep. too, and. I've always maintained that if I could have the voice of one oh. singer dead or alive, it would be Freddie Mercury. Freddie Mercury was one of the greatest of all oh. time. And yeah. And so that, that's just, if, and especially if you hit the, like the mama, ooh, <laughs> oh, and, yeah. and everybody gets going. Uh-huh. Cause that's like when the soul comes yes. into it, you know, like, mm-hmm. Oh, if you, if you nail that one. Yeah. And especially when the, uh, when the core, the, the, like the choral part mm-hmm. hit, hits with the backgrounds and the, like, uh-huh. Um, uh, as as a as a a side for me. Boom. And then everyone plays the air guitar. Yeah, yeah. they just get their headband uh, for a while. That's and it. The, the Mupp- if the Muppets cover it. Oh, yeah. Then it's that's a good point. That yeah. is, all right. All right. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. I mean, <laughs> like, I, like I said, I put it. I had to put a dark horse because of the degree of difficulty. That's there. true. All right. That's so true. now we're on to we're on to my number two. Now my number two is. Uh, this is a this is another one where I feel like uh, it might skew more to the male side, mm. um, but it's the story of a small town girl, Tommy, <laughs> living who's in living world. in her lonely world. <laughs> she took a midnight train going anywhere. Oh. Don't oh. stop believing by journey. Oh, that is fantastic. I mean, come on, <laughs> that is like another that, great one. I feel like as a as a man i that song comes on in any sort of public place and i just for whatever reason i am genetically programmed to sing along with it Mm -hmm. and journey's got some great songs oh they do local local california band san francisco yep yep that uh there's one thing that that i don't want to say it poisoned the well however okay there's one thing that that knocks it down a peg for me okay and that's after every giants home game win san francisco giants yeah they sing that song. I'm going to pretend that that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I'm a Dodger they fan. Always play Journey, and yes. I'm an A's fan. Right. So, so that's. Uh, but I mean, again, it's, so it's good. just it's so good. Every it's, I feel like every that's guy knows the to words of that one. It is a yeah. it is a hard one, but it's another one that if you get up there, uh, and maybe you're not the most musically or or vocally gifted singer, like yeah. I'm not. But if I sing that song, I feel like I'm going to have the support of the crowd because yeah. they're going to help you through certain parts, and it's going to sound pretty good. So I'm going. Number two, don't stop believing. I love, I love it. Yeah, that's a great one. All right, all right. My my number one spot. Here we and, go. And we, are, uh, and your wife standing nearby. She gave the, <laughs> the 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 recommendation that you got to have a song that's hard to sing and maybe has some fast lyrics, mm-hmm. whether it's a rap okay. song or anything like that. This falls into that, and this was an, a classic '90s song, like just '90s. That kind of in, that weird alt rock. You're okay. not quite sure. I, I'm, I'm going to take a. I'm going to have a song in my head, but okay. I'm not going to say. I'll tell you if I'm right and, or wrong. And this is a song. Every time I've I've sung it in karaoke, everyone's like, "I completely forgot about that song. Mm-hmm. That song's awesome." Okay. And I didn't know like half of those lyrics. And it's "Semi Charm Kind of Life." By, oh, that's not it. By right. Third Eye Blind. That's a great song, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Semi Charm Kind of Life. Yep. Baby. And baby. it's basically like half rapping in the beginning. Yeah. It's 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 not rapping, but it's singing fast. And it's pretty lengthy, and it, you gotta uh, pull in mm-hmm. some full breaths beforehand. The diaphragm, so, yeah, get the yeah. diaphragm going. Yep. Oh man, I won a bet against Marston Sawyer's mm. one time because our buddy was over, and we were all having a big get together, um, hanging at a friend's house. And our, one of our friends is very musically inclined, um, and he would bring his guitar. His name's Matt Sarzuela. Shout out. I don't know if he's listening or not, but he would play, and he would just sing songs. Uh-huh. And Marston's like, we started 
kind of talking about semi charm kind of life. And he goes, Does anyone ever know the lyrics to that song? Of I was course, like, Morrison said, that. I do. And he's like, I'll bet you, I can't remember what he bet. He's like, You can't sing that song front to back. And I sang it front to back. And he was like, Well, shoot. <laughs> he didn't say that. But, yeah. yeah. I and, thought you were going to go tub thumping by Chumbo. Oh, I get knocked out. I get knocked out. That's a good bar uh, song. That is that is a fantastic one. That's one mm. one of my buddies would always okay. sing too. <laughs> that's where I thought you were going. But I did, that's a, that is that's a great when you think about it, it's a great karaoke song. Okay, yeah, well is. my number one is one that I thought you disrespected, and that is uh. "Sweet Caroline" <laughs> by Neil Diamond. And there's a reason that establishment said you couldn't sing it until it's one of the last songs because it is the greatest karaoke song of all time. Because you may not know any of the lyrics, but you know the chorus, and you know to go ba ba ba. You know, yep. you know to do that. Oh, so. Man. <laughs> and, and and everybody loves Neil Diamond. Yep. What seen I, him in concert twice, Tommy. Really? I have seen the great wow. Neil Diamond in concert twice. I mean, Brother Loves Traveling Salvation Show. <laughs> you know, just that's the one that the, my mom loves me some Neil. Oh, she loves her oh, some Neil Diamond. Oh, I bet. love Neil Diamond. I, I have, took her to see her see him one time, like back in the nineties. I have no doubt. What actually, you know, one of my favorite Will Ferrell impersonations <laughs> yeah. is of Neil, Neil Diamond. Diamond. That, that one that one <laughs> skit where he's talking about like he, Oh yeah, he just goes off the rails about all the, the illegal <laughs> stuff he did. And... Yeah, that's <laughs> uh, it's, it's the storyteller's yep, one, yeah. Yep, the story. That's oh. right. That was hilarious. But I mean, Sweet Caroline. Uh, I have actually sung this karaoke with a friend of mine when I lived in Jacksonville, mm. and we had. I mean, the whole place got into it. It's yeah. just you. You. Can, I don't know if there's a, a, a better karaoke song exists for just a fun time than Sweet Caroline by Neil Diamond. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a great. It's a great one. I, the semi charm kind of life one was also. I have a good memory in it. Mm-hmm. Sixth grade, we had the dare dance, which was like the first like real dance we went to in oh, elementary school. Okay, so that all right. That's like guys hung out on one side of the gym and girls hang out. And, and then the that was the song that brought the ha- semi charm kind of life was raging really? back then. It was okay. ninety eight, I think. Okay, um, that was uh, that? Third Eye Blind had a killer album. That, I mean that that album had like Jumper graduate yeah um I, I don't think crystal i think crystal ball came out on a different do, do, one do, yeah. Do, 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 do. yeah i used to yep. play that song in a bar on thursday nights on the open mic night graduate? Yeah, yeah. yep mm-hmm. that was that was great Jumper's a great song um super sad too yeah I've, but yeah that that song came on and i remember that was the song that brought all the guys and the girls mm-hmm. dancing and jumping jumping like go. moshing together you gotta know as a dj what songs to play to. after that got you know got ashley seidel to be my girlfriend and oh I was, I was one like, song that's all right it, huh <laughs> just walked out of their finger guns and my dad, <laughs> 12 year old me with a yeah you know tommy he'll figure polo and some corduroy <laughs> pants some bleach tips yeah. and you're ready. Oh, God. um so I, there, there were some songs that didn't make it okay. um one of them was low places for me uh, another one was ice ice baby by yes. vanilla ice Ooh. almost made it so did baby or Baby Got Back almost made it, uh, and so did uh, Can't Touch This by MC Hammer. And then my one, I was put through this when I was uh, working in Tallahassee, and and it was like my I was leaving. I was going to Jacksonville, Mm -hmm. and I went out with some friends, and they're having a karaoke night, and I never put my name in. Well, they put my name in without me knowing it, and I get called, and I don't know what I'm doing. I go up there, and they picked Copacabana by Barry Manilow. And the, (laughs) the guy who's running the thing, the guy who's running the thing goes, he hands me the mic. He goes, have fun. It's nine minutes long. And just like walks off the stage, like went out for like a smoke break or something. So I'm up there by myself singing Copacabana. That is such a good thing. Oh, man. It was terrible. Like nine minutes. I'm up there. Her name was Lola. She was a showgirl. It was awful. Of course, Barry Man. Oh. He writes oh. the songs that makes the whole world sing. Yes. Tommy. Yes, of course. So, yeah, oh, those are man. the ones that, that almost made the list. For, oh, and then Whiskey in the Jar by Metallica. Oh, yes, and that's because that my is. brother, that's his go-to song. In fact, yeah. I got a call one time from a friend of mine in Los Angeles. And it was like the middle of the night. I was living on the East Coast at the time. And it's like one in the morning, my time. And my friend Ben calls me up. And I'm like, why is he calling me at this hour? This must be serious. And I pick up the phone. And it's just, he's screaming into the phone because he's at the Saddle Ranch at uh, Universal City. Mm-hmm. you know like right outside universal studios there's that saddle ranch mm-hmm. and he's like hey man I, your brother's here at the saddle ranch and he's singing whiskey oh he's on the bar right now wait <laughs> wait you mean the one over the uh, the one the saddle ranch up here no the one is, is it i think it's called the saddle ranch in fremont no in uh 
in Los Angeles. By oh, outside oh of, sorry, sorry. I yeah. thought you meant the saddle. It might rack. not be called the saddle ranch. Oh, okay. I don't. I think it is. But yeah. Anyway, he's your brother's always on the bar. He's running around the place singing this song. So I got this great play-by-play of my brother doing whiskey in the jar, uh, probably after after a few wobbly pops, and he was oh, a couple, crushing it. A couple of frosty frock yeah. wagons. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what what ones did you leave off? Uh, I, I got. But honestly, I, I will say this. The heavy the Metallica's version of whiskey in the jar is phenomenal. Oh, it's it's, great song. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, especially with like how, it's like one of those songs like um Hallelujah that's been done yeah. by so many yep. people. And I'm like, this is one of the ones where I kind of got really mm-hmm. good that way. Uh so I got a couple. Get low by little John on the east side okay. boys. Uh, right. just because the intro is that dum 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 and that's like the intro everyone knows like Oh, oh we're gonna get low. Ah, oh, skeets, skeets. <laughs> so I have a I have a great story of senior year of high school. Uh, we had a couple of friends, uh, one of which who was the valedictorian. This is we had a we had a celebratory event, mm-hmm. <laughs> put it lightly. And these one of the two jumped up on a table with his shirt off and was singing that song, swinging mm-hmm. it around. The other one was doing something that. Potentially could have gotten him arrested. Yes, as the, <laughs> as the valedictorian to that song. Oh, good. Okay, but you know it was all above board. It wasn't it wasn't bad. Mm. You know, but I just I didn't want to encourage anything. You yes. know, to our young listeners. Um, anything Creed? Oh <laughs> because man, that, that that is that is either going to do really well or it's going to bomb. That's high high risk high reward. Exactly, you're exactly. Yeah. Because you're because if you do it well, you can pull a lot of people that like shamefully like creed mm-hmm. like it's like it's like seeing matchbox 20 or something you know it's like <laughs> one of those 90s like alt rock songs yep. you're like oh i, oh, I, I know the, the cd like oh, no. I, I know the old lyrics <laughs> to this song oh like human clay was part of my collection uh-huh. um forgot about dre That's okay. a good rap song uh anything oasis yeah um fun i think i told this story in we'd sang karaoke in after the pandaland event in china Yes. I'm at a karaoke bar in Chengdu. Okay. It sounds like the night. And members, athletes from the athlete program, which is a UK based yeah. team, were singing with us. And they picked three Oasis songs in a row. <laughs> I'm like, that's the most UK <laughs> exactly. thing ever. Like, it's like the new version of the Beatles. Oh, like, man. Oh, man. Well, Pro- that's good stuff. Like that. We got to find Ooh. ourselves a karaoke night. Yeah. Someplace. Yes. I don't know if those any any of those establishments are open, but yeah. when they are, ooh, rapper's delight. Almost. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay. And no diggity. Mm. All right. And this one's a little bit generational, but back in the day, if you sang "I Want It That Way" in college by oh, Backstreet Boys, okay. you could get like four of your boys up there with mm. you, and they now, you could play the role. You harmonized it, mm-hmm. crushing it. Yeah. Okay. What's the song by uh, System of a Down? Ooh, uh, Chop Suey. That's it. Yep. Yeah, I heard one guy do that, and he, it, it was terrible. Yeah, but, but I was like, eh, if you nail that one, you're pretty good too. I have that that song along with a few others. I have a special place in my heart because remember we were talking about like sneaking out of the uh-huh. house in high school, and I I got in trouble for sneaking out and pushing my dad's car down the driveway. <laughs> that system of a down CD was always in his Kia. Oh. So <laughs> man, yeah, so like here, a rock here. Yeah, here I am at you know one in the morning on a weeknight driving in a <laughs> Kia with system with a down playing. All right. Real rock and roll right there. Okay. Well, those are our podium picks for karaoke songs. We'd love to hear what yours are. Leave them in the comments. Mm-hmm. Uh, that will do it for today's edition of our podium picks over so Tommy Marquez. I'm Sean Woodland. Thanks for listening and uh, go do some singing. Mm-hmm.